The vast majority of millionaires and billionaires today are self-made. They started with very little and achieved great success. And it's not just money. Look at any area where a person highly achieves. Most were not gifted with the skills to succeed, yet they did so anyway. Including stay-at-home parents, leaders of charitable organisations, employees, and business owners. Are these people just lucky? Or are there key factors that will help you ensure you can achieve great success? Welcome to Share.Care, an all-inclusive community sharing experience, strength, and hope to create strong, healthy, and inspiring relationships. Share.Care communities work toward every individual feeling safe, valued, and heard, free from the threat of danger, pain, or harm. Each episode, founder Damian Andrews explores the principles underpinning Share.Care and invites expert special guests to share their knowledge so you can easily reap the benefits so many others experience. You hold the choice to create your future. Let it be with strong, healthy, and inspiring relationships. Hello and welcome to an on-the-couch edition of the Share.Care podcast. Our belief is that global peace starts at home, feeling safe, valued and heard gives you a foundation to confidently step out and make the world a happier and safer place for everyone. Because in today's world, it's in your own selfish best interest to help others. Commonly, it's believed to succeed you need willpower, high intelligence, motivation and knowing the right people. But really, are they the keys to success? Let's look at willpower. Now, willpower, by its nature, requires a lot of effort. And effort takes energy, which I think links to the motivation side of things. And you've really got to struggle. You've got to push through. It's like this massive obstacle in front of you. And it makes it really, really hard to succeed. And there is a belief out there that success is tough. and So when we look at people, particularly when they come from, I mean, we we talked about the majority of millionaires and billionaires didn't, weren't gifted that. They, They went and they earned it. So they must have tremendous ability, tremendous skill. But then when you look at their background, you go, well, they didn't come from much. So how does that work? When we're talking about willpower and this, this drive and this massive energy to succeed, And I know um, from a number of uh, people that I know that are highly successful, their, their their willpower is not something that, that drove them to succeed. I mean, they, they work. Yes, they do work. um, I'm going to use the word hard very carefully, but they, they put in a lot of effort. Let's use the word effort. They put in effort to get where they're going, but most of them, that I know, yes, they are very focused and we'll get into what those traits are, but they, I don't know that any work hard. One of, depending on what your version of success is, I know a business owner, he owns a small business and it's only three employees. So it's, it's a small business. And he works probably one and a half, two days a week. The business is turning over a, a modest amount. It's a couple of million it turns over. He's got three employees, pays those wages, um, and he kind of guides the ship, and the rest of the time he plays golf. <laughs> That's his version of success. So he's not putting in a tremendous amount of effort uh, in that regard. He's not working hard, so to speak. So there's a lot, not a lot of willpower there. He's not, he's not having to constantly drive to make, make this succeed, and he didn't when he set it up either. He, it was set over up over a period of time, but that's his version of success. Um, so willpower itself, and I don't like to rely on willpower. I've done that in the past where it's, you know, I've thought of, about willpower and gone, okay, you know, I've got to drive, I've got to push hard. And, and you do eventually get tired. 
<laughs> you wear out and you're going, oh, my God, and then you binge watch. Well, back then I was binge watching DVDs because I'd just run out of energy. And it was like, oh, I've had enough and i just got to stop. And, and then I'd you know, pick whatever series that I was interested in and just sit there and watch that because I needed to chill out. And, and that's where willpower really um, – it's, I don't like relying on it. It's not a, it, it requires a lot of effort. You run out of energy and it's, it's not a, and, and it's not one of the factors that it's not a key factor or a predictor of success, someone having willpower. Um, the other one is high intelligence. And I know from my perspective, and if you've listened to me talk, you can pretty clear. I nearly failed English and you can hear that in um in how i talk and my, my i'm not the best in english language and it's my only language i've started to learn a couple of others but i never never completed that uh, so english is probably my only language but even then i you know i'm not the great greatest at it um you know my, and at school I, I don't know that i was highly intelligent either i mean my academic results uh, in early years I, I did very well but i think i mean i got good results like I was an A student early on, but that wasn't because of intelligence. Um, <laughs> the difference was, is you know, back then when I was studying, um, I'd come home and my mum, uh, and my sister and myself, she made us do at least another hour of study. So it wasn't a factor that I was highly intelligent to get A's. I was actually doing just doing a lot more study and I was ahead of where we needed to be. Uh, and that's um, I put that to my son's uh, my son's karate sensei. He's a six dan black belt in karate. And I said to him, I said, "Well, if I asked you to do grading at a yellow belt standard, how hard would that be for you?" And he could be. He said it'd be really easy. And I said, "Why is that?" And he said, "Well, because I've got much more skill." And I said, "That that's the factor that makes a difference when you're." You know, how hard something is, is relative to your experience. And this relates to the intelligence side of things. There are, you know, from when I look at my schooling, again, I early on I achieved really good results. That went downhill when my, my stopped doing that study with my mum because I got a bit older and a bit rebellious and I wouldn't do it. And as a result, my results went downhill. So that academic result is not necessarily a factor of well academic results aren't a factor of intelligence that's more academic results is a, a, the way exams are structured it's more about um, the rote learning you've learnt the material and you're able to recite that back intelligence highly intelligent people when we look at it from another factor you can take uh, two people from history involved in electricity you've got nikola tesla and um and Benjamin Graham. Now, depending on how you view success, I mean, Nikola Tesla invented a lot of um, uh, a lot of things and, and drove a lot of things forward. Um, but at the same factor, he wasn't really highly successful. Um, and he, I think, he died broke. Um, I know uh, Elon Musk has um, named a company. Well, there was a company named after him, and Elon Musk has promoted that uh, Tesla. Um, Tesla car, well, the Tesla company is named after Nikola Tesla, but Nikola Tesla himself wasn't successful. Conversely to that, Benjamin um, Graham, not Benjamin Graham, Benjamin Franklin, I don't get my name, who, who invented the light bulb? <laughs> Mental blank here, apologies for that. Um, but Oh, I, I'm getting caught here and I'm not going to edit this so you can deal with my mental blank and, 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 and it probably highlights the point on intelligence that you know here I am having a mental blank as to who invented the light bulb um, Benjamin Franklin I'm pretty sure it is Benjamin Franklin um, and Benjamin Graham I'm getting confused he was the in, father in, of modern investment is, is what I understand but yeah so Benjamin Franklin invented the, the light globe and if I've got that wrong feel free to comment away um, and said, I'm not claiming to be highly intelligent. And that's the point I want to get to when we look at that, the um, Benjamin Franklin, <clears throat> um, he, from a business perspective, was highly successful, um, had a huge amount of different businesses um, and 
did very well when you compare that to Nikola Tesla. So they, they were both highly intelligent, but was that a predictor of success? And there are many, many people that are highly intelligent um, that don't achieve success. The history is littered with that. So high intelligence is not necessarily a factor. It's, a, it's circumstantial. Yes, some highly intelligent people succeed, but not all high. It's not if you're highly intelligent, you will succeed. Then we look at um, motivation. We talked about motivation, particularly in relation to willpower. Motivation. Um, I know a lot of people that are highly motivated um, and there's times there, but I've been highly motivated and wasn't particularly successful. If you're highly motivated and heading in the wrong direction, it's not really going to be helpful to you. And that's something to consider with, you know, is it a, a, um, uh, a key factor to success? And motivation in and of itself, you can be motivated in the wrong direction. Um, there's people, some people in history um, that were highly successful from a point of, uh, well, they were successful in a way, um, but not successful from the, the, from a humanity perspective and what was in the interest of the world. Uh, so you, you can look at a number of tyrants that have been around um, and they've, you know, they've achieved certain things, but they never were highly successful in their overall outcome because of their motivation was in the, in the wrong way. And this is where motivation is, is really important to you know, success. It's just because you're highly motivated to achieve an outcome doesn't mean that you're going to have long-term and lasting success. Um, so that's an extreme uh, example of that. And pick your tyrant and, and look at you know, most, you know, they were, they moved forward, they're highly motivated, they charged forward and then they fell in a heap because, you know, it, their motivation um, wasn't great, was well, terrible in a lot of cases uh, when you're dealing with tyrants. But motivation in and of itself just because you're motivated towards a certain outcome doesn't mean that that's going to lead to success. And similar term, uh, similar as to that as well is like having the motivation to succeed. Well, that that links to willpower as we talked about before. It requires effort. When it requires effort, that effort will eventually run out. Well, that energy for that effort will eventually run out, and it'll be difficult to succeed. Um, having connections to the right people. Yeah, that's um, and this is a factor that's really interesting when you look at that. Um, and I'm taking this from my experience because I, I mean, I grew up in a small country town. There was no great connections there, um, and but when I look at it, and I'll take an example from when I was a kid in a small town, and, and the connections that help make something work. I used to race radio controlled cars and and we had an off-road track. Well, I didn't have it, but the club had an off-road track and that's where I used to race. And some of the people there, they had um, on-road cars and you couldn't race them off-road and didn't really have anywhere to race. And I was aware of some old netball courts in the town that I was. So the the, um, the car track was in a different town. Or it's a country. You know, it lived in a country area, small little towns all around the place. and. So I was aware of these old netball courts, and I thought that would be a good idea, um, uh, a good place to to race these on road cars. And I was aware. I, I come. I think I asked. I was doing a paper round at the time, and I think I asked the um, the the news agent owner, who was the who had the netball courts or who was in control of them. It turned out that the local fire brigade did. And I went, okay, cool. And then I said, who's the um, fire chief? And he told me who the fire chief was. Uh, and I found out where his address was, and I went and uh, went knocked on his door and said, "Look, um, you know, this is the situation. We race radio-controlled cars. Um, we've got some on-road cars. Can we use the, the netball courts as a an on-road track?" And he said, "Sure, sure. We we can organise that." Now I didn't have that connection, um, you know, before I made some inquiry. And this is my experience as an analogy. That's my experience all through life. A lot of times where I wanted to achieve something. I've not had the connection, um, but I've made the inquiry. 
and I've found the amount of time, I've found that people that are actually quite successful are very generous. Um, the amount of times I've, I mean, there's people that I know that are like millionaires in the, in the category of, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars. That's their net worth. And I didn't know them. Um, I've, you know, I got to know them I, uh, through various different means. Um, I remember Ralph Sarich, um, you know, a very wealthy man. I, I, I wrote to him. I found out where he lived and I wrote him a letter, um, asked him for some advice, and he wrote back to me. Uh, so I didn't, again, I didn't have that connection, but he wrote back to me and answered my questions. It was like, it was, you know, I didn't have coffee with him or anything like that, but other people I have. I've got to know them. I've spoken to them and said, can I have coffee? And obviously with those people, it's not about creating a friendship. You can need to be mindful of that. With creating these connections, a lot of people, you know, they, they want to download. I've seen people do that. They want to download their problems to, and I have that all the time, where people try and download their problems to me. And it's like, I'm not your psychologist. And the same token, if you want to create these connections, don't don't look to be their psychologist. Respect their time. And I found through that, you know, so I'll buy you know buy your cup of coffee, and or buy your lunch. And can I? I've got some questions I'd like to ask. And you know, their their assistant generally books it in, and I'll have coffee and ask them some questions and be respectful of their time. When they have to go, they have to go. And most of the time, they actually buy the lunch or the coffee. It's really, it's really interesting um, how that works. And like I, I've offered to do that. And I found like when you, you're talking about <clears throat> um, you're having the right connections, you know, do they have it? Well. Being connected with people is a factor of success, and we'll get to that in a minute. But just having the connections, you know, that's not a, a key factor because you find those connections. You find that ability to relate, uh, to um, find the people that are that can help you. And most of those people will be willing to help you. And, and so that, that's where um, obviously you need to be respectful of their time. And some people may not there's people that have asked for help you know can can we have a catch up and they've said no and and that has not that's fine move on to the next person um so fine having the right connections is not really um it is a fact in the sense of you can gain a lot, lot of knowledge but you create those connections and it's not that it's not that difficult to do i mean asking people for advice and help most people will help you I and mean, that's how you create those connections so what are the um, the factors there there are key um, predictors factors um, whatever you want to call them to success and there's a lot of research on this and again I'm not going to get into the research you can look that up yourself but it, it is there well the, the first one and this was done originally the test was uh, to do with marshmallows they um, they uh, they gave each of the children in a class a marshmallow and said, and then said, I'm going to go out, but if you haven't eaten it when I come back, you'll get a second marshmallow. And they, they studied these, you know, what the people did, what the children did, and then studied them through life. And this is an ongoing a study that's been around for a long time. And what they found was that the children that were able to delay that gratification over their life, they had higher academic results, lower levels of substance abuse, um, lower rates of obesity, better able to handle stress, had better social skills. And, the, the, and that's just some of the, the benefits of this delayed gratification. And, and why is that the case? Well, I mean, obesity obviously stands out as an obvious one. Um, you know, if you have an urge to, to eat chocolate and you can delay that urge um, or, you know, put that aside, then obviously you're not, you've got less chance of being obese. Um, higher academic results again delayed gratification it's like well you might be <clears throat> and I do this with my son um, it's and maybe that's a trait that I got from when I was growing up as a child and my parents said you know do your work first then play later um, and you know sometimes I did it sometimes I didn't but it's something I certainly tried to instill with my son and it's like okay you, you love playing video games that's fine I'm okay with that as long as you've done what you need to do uh, before that um, and I also put it on him to to choose what he wants to get out of school so what marks he's aiming for and uh, so I'll turn I turn to him and say look um, how are you going towards getting the results that you want and you know, have you done a little bit of work today to, towards that and I, I won't direct him I'll ask him and 
So I've noticed, you know, he's now developed that habit of as much as he wants to play the video game, he delays that. He works, um, does his, does a little bit of homework regularly, and then he goes and plays the video game. And his school results have improved dramatically as a result of that over a period of time. So he was able to delay this, you know, this need to you know, have this satisfaction now for a bigger reward in the future. And then when we're talking about success, that's really what that relates to. It's like you're going, okay, I could um, use money as an example. I could spend this money now or I could invest it and allow compound interest to take um, take effect and then the income from that investment will then allow me to continue on without actually having to do anything more. So a lot of times we'll work, we'll spend that money um, and then we'll have to work again to spend that money. Delaying that gratification going, okay, I'll wait and in the future I will have... Um, uh, the ability just to not have to work because the income will come and support that. So that's where that delayed gratif gratification does lead to success. Um, so that's the first factor, ability to delay gratification. It's like, yeah, I mean, the example, clear example is money. You know, um, you know I want to have this all this stuff now, which means I'll have to continue to work. Or I will delay that gratification of having this thing now for the uh, to invest that money and then the income from that investment will allow me to um to have all that without working um, so that's how that works conscientiousness that's another key factor conscientiousness is being organized and responsible the two categories there certainly all the people that i know that are really successful are, are very organized and they take responsibility for what they're doing uh, so they they seriously they they're serious about what they want uh, to the extent you know some of my friends um, they have a journal in essence where every morning they'll read it and you can get this from Think and Grow Rich the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill but they'll have a journal of of what they want to achieve and that's the first page and going this is what I want to achieve and they read that every morning and every night this is their routine they will read. I want to do this every morning and, and every night. I, I have a similar, it's not a journal, but I have it electronically. These are my key goals that I'm working on and that's my focus because uh, I take it seriously that that's what I want to achieve. Um, they're planning ahead, which is, again, setting those goals. Anyone that succeeds has a goal to succeed. Um, you know, people don't succeed by accident. It's they've planned it. They've gone, this is what I want to achieve. And then they work backwards from that. What are the steps I need to take? Um, and then they control their impulses, which links to that first one of delayed gratification. So they know that, okay, this is what I want to achieve. This is, and part of that is how you think about yourself. Now, if you see in your mind um, yourself as a person that's just partying and having a good time, well, the chances of you delaying that gratification are not um, uh, is not going to be helpful to getting that outcome. And this is where, as I said, my friends with the, the journal, myself with my own electronic version of that, where I'm clearly looking at this is who I am you know, in the future, uh, but I'm seeing myself as that person now, so I'm taking that action. That's where when we talk about willpower. If you, you need to use willpower, you're fighting against something. But if you're already that person, if you're a person that goes, okay, for success, this is the steps I need to take. You've got that conscientious attitude. This is who I am. You just do it naturally. It's no effort for me to do the things that I need to do to succeed because that's who I see myself as. It's not willpower. It's just who I am. Um, and that's that's a big difference. And there's a whole other podcast. Well, I've got several podcasts on that where we talk about that and and the, um, that's part of the um, exceptional effort uh, program that we have as well, where we, we talk through and how to make that just happen in your life. So conscientiousness really does affect everything. And that's part of the organization part of that is important as well, because it's not your, you know, a disorganized person really. I know there's times I've been really disorganized, you know, crap everywhere. And that's just, you know, part of my thinking at that point in time and who I, uh, you know, whatever was going on. And and um, it's difficult to succeed. I look at I mean, right now, 
my workshop is is a basket case. There's crap everywhere. And that's partly because of when I moved here, it was a rush move and I never really got it sorted out. Um, and I've been busy doing other things, so it hasn't been a priority, um, which is why I haven't done much in the way of, of renovation because I just don't have um, – I get frustrated when I go and, and try and look for things because I can't find it. And I know it's there and I don't want to go and buy another tool or you know, part or whatever it is I need. And that's that organisation side of things. It's hard to succeed if you're not organised. Um, Contrary to, you know, I know there's a whole bunch of quotes out there that, you know, that talk about, you know, being disorganized. But it, the reality is conscientiousness, organization and responsibility is a key factor to, um, to making success, certainly making success much easier. The other, another factor is a belief in free will. Now, what we're talking about here is that you have the ability to choose your outcome. Um, when you don't have the ability to choose, you're kind of stuck with fate. And it's like, oh, you know, there's not much I can do about it. I'm stuck here. And again, coming back to the majority of millionaires and billionaires, they weren't born into a situation where they had that opportunity. If you look at it, you know, a lot of them come from impoverished backgrounds. So it's not, you know, that was their lot in life. And this is really important that you have the ability to choose. The other thing it links to, too, people that believe in fate, um, and the research shows this, that you know, they're more likely um, to cheat, to act aggressively, and to be less kind to others. Um, and, and why would you? If, if your lot in life is just determined by fate, of course. I mean, it's more, it makes sense that you would, would try and... Um, uh, Press maybe is not the right word, but you, you do whatever it is to get the things because, you know, it's just that's just the way it is. But when you believe in free will, that you have the ability to choose your outcome, it really links back to that responsibility and conscientiousness of, okay, I choose how I, how I, I choose my outcome. I can be anything that I want to be. Um, I choose... Um, how I'm going to react in a situation. Um, and, and that's really important as well because you look at, the, again, the people, you know, the, the millionaires and billionaires, they chose that, well, I, they wanted something different um, and they took the actions they needed to to get that. And that, and that was their choice. Um, so this is where free will, a belief in free will, the belief that you have the ability to choose. And that is really what the core is in our um, exceptional effort program is, is understanding you have the power to choose. Um, so really this belief in free will, um, believing that you have a choice. Now circumstances happen. Yes, that's right. Um, sometimes shit does happen. Now, but what the difference is, is your ability how to, uh, is your belief in your ability to choose how you react to that. I've had many circumstances where things haven't gone my way and I could throw up my hands and go, oh, fate says I can't have it, you know, but I haven't. I go, like, how can I use this? It's been my response. You know, I, I mean, I have a belief that nothing is good or bad. I don't, you know, think positive and negative. I don't think there are positive and negative events. I think there are events. And Shakespeare said, uh, or Shakespeare wrote, nothing is good or bad. Thinking makes it so. An event is just an event. And that's where things, you know, when the shit has hit the fan for me, um, I've looked at it and go, well, how can I use it? What do I need to do to, um, to make the most of it? Sometimes it's an, uh, a, an indication that I have something I need to learn. Other times it's, um, you know, how can I react differently to this? Um, so that's where that belief in free will, it's like, it's my choice. I choose how I'm going to react to event. When, when shit hits the fan, you choose how to react to it. Another factor is being in an open network. Um, and this is socializing with different types of people. Um, the organization, our organization, Sexy Moxie, its brand logo is diversity, strength, and hope. Diversity, we learn um, from things that are different to us. If we're open to it, you'll only learn if you're open to something. Um, I don't believe that you know children learn faster than adults. Um, 
I, I think adults have the ability to learn faster than children. What it is, we get so ingrained in how we do things, we're not open to new things. And this is where this being in an open network, being open to new ideas, this helps you grow. And that's what makes success. If you're not in a successful situation, if you're not achieving the success that you want, it's because, um, or my belief is because you don't have the ability um, or the skill yet to do that. And as soon as you learn that skill, it will become easy. Coming back to my, you know, the example of the karate sensei, my, my, my son's karate sensei, you know, he's got the skill to do things um, at that level. And a lot of times we think we, you know, we don't have, um, that we can't succeed and we don't, it, but it's just a matter of not having the, the knowledge to gain, um, to achieve what we need to achieve. And this is where being in an open network is, is really a key, in, in, um, a key to the, that success. Uh, and if you look at nature, nature's the same. You know, for any organism to survive, it has to grow. Nature is constantly evolving. Um, and so this is, you know, it's not something that we go, okay, this is done. You have to constantly evolve to and grow to succeed and to certainly stay at that level of success, um, you know, because the, the world is 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 growing and, and, and evolving. It's like my friend I mentioned earlier, he's got a small little business. You know, he part of the reason he continues to be involved in the business, he could just let it run, but he needs to ensure that the business is evolving and staying up to date. Otherwise, it will become extinct. And this is where being in that open network, being you know, the diversity side of things, learning from the strength comes from diversity. Strength comes from looking at how people do things differently and how that can help you grow. This is where, you know, having a, this diver, having a, um, open to, to diversity, opening to new ideas, sharing them with others. Um, that's a key factor to success. That's why having an open network is really, really important because if you're staying with the same ideas, um, you're not going to evolve. You're not going to grow and, and gain the knowledge you need to gain to A, succeed and continue to succeed. Another factor is avid reading. Now, reading improves brain connectivity and function. Um, but from that perspective too, I guess today, I think that's more referring to learning because I mean, we, a lot of this was done before we had the, the explosion of information that we have now with the internet and, and YouTube and, um, and other videos and that kind of education. And certainly there's a shift to that. So I think it's more... When say avid reading, we're actually avid learning. I would I would change that to avid learning because I know from my perspective. I mean, I do read a lot, um, but I also learn a lot from listening. Um, you know, listening to to audio books, those kind of things. But the one thing I would add to that, it's not just reading, because um, I know people that read countless books and are stuck in this cycle of not really achieving much. Because they're reading a lot, but they're not absorbing a lot. And from my perspective, what I have done before, um, and you know, there's books that I will constantly go back to. You know, Think and Grow Rich is one, um, and and there's other audios that I have uh, that I will constantly go back to. And and there's even times where I've gone, I've looked, I've read something, going, oh, I need to do that, and I will either read it or listen to it again and again and again until it's ingrained because it's one thing to read it. It's another thing to understand it and do it. And this is when we're talking about doing, we're talking about the difference between unconscious and conscious action um, or unconscious and conscious thinking because actions are unconscious. Um, conscious is understanding. You, know, you can understand something. Um, doesn't mean you, that you're going to do it in the moment. Um, and we've got a whole um, course on that as well as to how to train your unconscious to, to, to do that. But really, I mean, if we're going to distill it down into an essence, what you want to be doing is, is absorbing it and making a habit and, and repeating something and doing something 28 times, you know, give or take. But around that helps start that new habit process. It kind of solidifies it a little bit. It's not permanent at 28, but 
that's when it's really starting to take hold. And this is where, you know, a lot of times people will read something or watch something and go, oh, that's a great idea. Um, you have that all the time with companies where they will do, um, they will have a lessons learned, you know, a session after a project or something. They go, okay, we, we have these lessons learned. And they go through it. Yep, yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, this was the issue. Yep. Okay. This is how we can deal with that differently. And then it goes into a box and, and never gets looked at again. And they go back to the old habits. So this is where from that, that avid reading perspective or you know, avid learning, you know, it's one thing to, to have that knowledge. It's another thing to make it part of your unconscious action. So I take that a step further. Well, certainly I do from my perspective. I make sure that it's ingrained as something that I am doing. One of the other factors that's referred to is childhood adversity. Now, they say that a lot of people that succeed, and we mentioned before about millionaires and billionaires, they didn't come from, um, they generally come from less idyllic backgrounds. But I think I'm going to put that one to the side a little bit as a, a um, the, the, the less idyllic backgrounds as a factor that leads to success because there's many people that come from less idyllic backgrounds that don't succeed, that don't have great lives. Um, and so I think that's more circumstantial. But one of the things that is different um, in that area when we're looking at, okay, from a childhood perspective, uh, it comes down to you know, a motivation to succeed, a motivation to have to be um, something different to what you have, an expectation, a belief that you can lead a different life to you have. And part of that comes from your parents but even if you haven't got that as a parent you can certainly instill it as an adult because one of the other research that's been done is that with um with people that are highly successful they're looking for some key factors particularly those that came from less idyllic backgrounds as to what drove them to succeed and the one thing they did multiple i think it was in 280 different variables they went through um but the, there were, and none of them aligned. So looking at all these really, really successful people and trying to find what is the common factor. And then yeah, they, they found one, and that factor was generally it was the parent of the opposite sex, but that parent, whether it was the parent or not, or the opposite sex or not, it was that the parent would have an unquestionable belief in the child's ability. So what does that mean? It means that like, if the child said, I want to be an astronaut, they'd be going, you'll be the best astronaut ever. And when we're talking about the child, we're talking about, you know, from the age you know, up to about age five was what they looked at. And, you know, it wasn't, you know, uh, you know okay, you want to be an astronaut, have a, have a fallback plan just in case you don't succeed because that's really hard and, and you, you'll struggle. What they, the, those parents of those highly successful people at that age, um, they just believed, said, yep, you'll be the best astronaut ever. And what it was about was not so much um, whether the child would be an astronaut or not. You know, whether because five, you're not going to know what the you know, child's not going to know what they're going to do. They got, you know, they, they've got a very limited view of the world. What it was, the factor was that the the child was taught from a very young age that they can be anything, they can achieve anything they want to achieve. Doesn't matter what it is, they can achieve that. Because the, the parent instilled that in them that they can, you know, they can do whatever they want to do, um, and it's that that links back to this belief in free will, conscientiousness, um, delayed gratification, um, that kind of thing. It, it all links back that that type of thinking. So if you've got young children, certainly one of the things to do, certainly when you start talking and they're talking about what they want to do. Um, the biggest help that you can give them is whatever they say they want to do. You support their ability to do whatever it is they want to do. And whether they're going to do that, it's not another story. It's like that's different. As they grow up, they're going to evolve and, and change. But at that age, what you want to be instilling in them is that they have the ability to do whatever it is they want. And as an adult, you can do that as well. I mean, you might not have had that belief. You might not have had parents. That's not a reason to say, oh, I can't succeed. Again, Come back to free will. You choose. A belief is just a thought that you've repeated over and over again. It's not real. It's just a thought. That's why people have different beliefs. I mean, if a belief was fact uh, as it is, we'd all have the same beliefs, and we don't. The reason we don't is it's it's again it's a thought 
that you've repeated over and over again. So from that perspective, you can now go, okay, I believe I can you know, do whatever it is I want to do. And if you repeat that over and over again, it's going to become a belief and, and that's going to, um, uh, to be part of your thinking and, and, and you're going to have what you know, those children had as well. So childhood adversity, you know, being from less idyllic surroundings, not, I don't think that's really a factor of success because there's, there's, um, it's more circumstantial that people, highly successful people, said the vast majority of millionaires and billionaires were self-made. They didn't come from backgrounds of money. Um, what is the common factor there is is they believe that they you know they overcome adversity at a young age, young age and they continue to to believe that past success is another factor um, and you can you can create this I mean past success gives you confidence if you've been successful in a certain area uh, then you're more confident to be able to do that in the future. But you can create that confidence as well. So this is where, and this is part of the programs that we run, is, is you, know, you want to create a situation where you set yourself up to succeed. And this is where it's important to set the rules for what it is, um, what is success to you. Like from my perspective, you know, I like to ex exercise. There's times where I haven't, but I, I like to exercise. But same token, I want to set myself up for success. So one of my rules is I don't say I will exercise every day because the chances are um, that's not going to happen. And it doesn't happen from my perspective. So I set myself up and I say I will exercise on most days. And, I, and it's a vague, you know, what is most? What it does ensure is that I don't fail because I do exercise on most days. Um, and sometimes the exercise I do is very small, but it's still exercise. So I'm succeeding. I'm feeling successful about that. And that encourages me to do more. And this is where we want to, if, if you're, you know, you know, this is where setting huge, massive goals is, is, can be good if you structure it well. And it's important to, if you've got this massive goal, let's say you, you don't have a lot of money, coming back to the money thing, because a lot of people can relate to that. If you don't have a lot of money and you want to be you know, a multi-billionaire, you might go, well, okay, this is what I want to, I want to be a multi-billionaire. Um, and the more you don't achieve that, the more you're likely to feel demotivated, de-stressed. Well, you can say, okay, I want to be a multi-billionaire. What's the first step I can do that? Well, my first step is you know, I can spend less than I earn. That's a goal. Now, if you start doing that for a couple of weeks, all of a sudden you're feeling successful. And then you go, okay, now I'm going to invest that money success, um, uh, yeah, successfully. And so you find ways of doing that. And you create these little successes which then build your confidence. And so past success you know, gives you that confidence, but you choose what your success is. So it's kind of a you know, chicken or egg thing. It's like, well, how do I have success? Well, you set yourself up to have success. It's pretty easy. Uh, and then another factor is perseverance. Um, and this is often referred to as mental strength. And, and we're coming back to here, um, the will of keep going in adversity, the um, you know, willpower, that kind of thing. And again, I'm not a big fan of that as a success because it, it implies effort is required, that you're going to have to struggle really hard. You know, there's times where it's just going to be, oh, my God, I have to and I don't, that is, can be, well, it is tiresome. Eventually, if, if you're constantly, constantly struggling, that's going to become tiresome and you're going to get worn out. The willpower will run out. Your energy will run out. And, you know, um, and I know from my experience as many times, as I mentioned before, I'd sit there and get so worn out. I'd just sit there and binge watch you know, DVDs because I had this attitude. You had to work really hard to succeed. So perseverance, how do we achieve perseverance? Perseverance is important. You need to keep moving forward. And from my side of things, I now expect that the road is, one, I expect the road is going to be rocky. There's times where things are not going to go as planned, which means what that is, I treat that as an awakening now. It's like, oh, something's happened. I need to learn something different. It's not something I have to fight against. It's not something I have to struggle against. It's just, Okay, there's some information. I, I need to learn something new. 
and move forward. And it, it might change the um, the the duration that I'm expecting to achieve the goal because that's new information I didn't have when I set the goal. And okay, I was going to do that, and I thought I could do it. But then this new information comes in, this adversity comes in, so to speak, or an event happens. This is the way I like to look at it. An event happens, which you know, ah, I need to um, to adjust to that. And I treat it as simple as I've just said it. I need to adjust to that. So it's not something I have to fight against. Like, okay, I might have to learn so I might have to, you know, it might take me a little bit longer to get to what I want. But it's not something I have to fight against. It's not something I, you need to put any extra effort into. Because again, I've set myself up, you know, to to succeed in that way. So that's where I mean perseverance is it's just it's keeping that goal in front of you and coming back to um to my friends and you know have their journals and they read that every morning. And they they go through lots of adversity, lots of things that don't go to plan. Um they just keep focused on that. That's what what perseverance is. And that doesn't require effort at all. You know, to to visualize in your mind this is this is where I'm heading. Um that doesn't require effort. It's like this is how I see it. And and yes I need to adjust to circumstance that's happened. Um but uh, that's still where I'm heading. I'm not changing that. Uh, and so that that doesn't require effort. Um, only when you start to doubt yourself, um, and you know you, you have the ability to do whatever it is you choose. So that's how um, you know I've explained as we've gone through that. You know we how we want to. You know these are the key factors. You know delaying gratification, um, conscientiousness, which is being organised and responsible. A belief in free will, which is you you believe you have the power to choose. You, life is not just fate and you're just stuck with it. Um, being part of an open network, so being you know open to diversity. Um, avid reading, well, avid learning. Being, have a belief that, you know, what it is that you can achieve what it is, whatever it is that you want to achieve. Setting yourself up for success and, and perseverance. But perseverance, it's probably not the best word. But it's more about just keeping that what you want in your mind at that point in time, um, and so that's that's really you know from our perspective what we teach in our um, exceptional exceptional effort program, because at the end of the day you do have the power to choose your success, whatever that might be, is yours to choose. Thank you for being part of the Share.Care community and helping people around the world prosper. You're creating a bigger pie for everyone to share. The more people contributing to the world being a better place, the better the world becomes for others and for you.